ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, all ages, this is me, Duke CT, here, live, on the Duke CT Lounge, thank you so much for joining me, if you want to connect to me, Duke CT, here, on TalkShoe.com, remember the phone number is 724-444-7444, let's get in the number is 724-444-7444, and the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417, once again, the call ID is 92417. What a week in wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, as, wow, <laughs> you know, um, one of the biggest things that happened uh, this week, as one of the most known stars of WWE, Daniel Bryan, yes, Daniel Bryan, ladies and gentlemen, who was last year, a couple years ago, had to forcibly retire. And it really does, it felt terrible, it felt horrible. A lot of people think he went way too early. And a lot of people were, you know, a lot of people felt that that it was done. Like he, it was, a lot of people didn't see this was going to happen. I mean, it's uh, it was basically Daniel Bryan, his head injuries, you'd think that it was, that was it. He can't wrestle and, you know, he couldn't wrestle again. And there were rumors that he was going to, when he was out of his contract, that he was going to go out and wrestle again, regardless of what the doctors told him. And a lot of people were worried about that. I was worried. A lot of fans were worried. Some people wanted it. Some people didn't want it. I was on the camp but didn't want it. I did not want to see Daniel Bryan hurt himself because he is a father now. He has to take that responsibility and like say, you know what, um, I, I'm a dad now. I got to take care of my, you know, take care of myself and take care of the people around me. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is, you know, that should be the main goal, you know, of the family and everything else. <laughs> yeah. But you know, <laughs> that you know something about this, this this huge moment uh, that people didn't see. I didn't see this coming. This was on, it was, let's see, it was the day of SmackDown. I hear, I heard this on. Let I know it's like oh that's too cheesy. Oh Duke, you're saying this, but seriously, I heard this on the first. I didn't hear this on Twitter. I found this on the freaking awesome network boards. That's when I first saw, saw this. Um, and it was an article. Uh, it says this quote. It says right here, following more than two years of exhaustive evaluations. Four-time world champion Daniel Bryan has been medically cleared to return to in-ring competition by, le by leading neurosurgeons, neurologists, and concussion experts. Oh, I got a guest too here, and he just left. Oh, well. Hopefully, I will, hopefully he can come back. I want the guest, guest to come back because I think this would be something, you know, hopefully he can come back. Because, hey, if you can't call in, remember, you got the, the chat room is on lock. So, you know, that sort of thing. Remember that. But also, he's just, and I, I quote, um, it says, new, lean neurosurgeons, neurologists, and concussion experts, including Dr. Robert Cantu, Dr. Javier Carnez, and Dr. Jeffrey Kutchner. Um, if I mispronounce things, I'm sorry. Anyway, Brian went un underwent a full review of his medical history, received co comprehensive neurological and physical evaluations depending on WWE. He was cleared by each doctor as well as the WWE's medical doctor, Joseph Maroon. After this is, when you heard this story, I was like, wow. And that is amazing. And I thought this was, can't be true. And then I got the thing on the app. I was like, wow, this is the second place I got it, from the app. I still have the WWE app, and wow, what a moment. Oh, oh, we got Kara Kennedy here. Hopefully he's there, and, um, you know, from um, Hips and Ninja Reviews. Also, he's in the chat room right now. Hopefully he uh, can call in. Remember, the number is 724-444-7444. The call ID is 92417 if he wants to call in. But he's in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully he can, um, um, you know, say some things in the chat. Because, again, I will, you know, because, hey, chat room is on lock always here on the Duke CT Lounge. But remember, if he wants to call in, hey, I will take the phone call. I'll take the phone call of everybody and um, and all the things and, nothing, and everything else. So if you can call in soon. Not, I'll put the thing in the chat so we can call in. <laughs> As you know, some people just, you know, hey, then, you know, uh, that's cool. You know, that's what it is. So, hey. Um, all right, anyway, um, 
that is, um, I was in shock when I first, it was on SmackDown. And when I first, I was, that was the first thing I saw in the promo. Well, let me tell you something. It was emotional. And that, that, that was real. He came back and it just like the, the, the way they talk, we talked about it, it's like he's coming back and going through all that, the, the personal things, everything that he had, he went through. Everything that Dane Bryan went through, it felt talked about, you know, him failing and everything else. He was like, he was about to just to give up, but his wife, Brie, came back and told him to keep fighting, to keep fighting. And that's the part, you, you always need someone behind, right behind you to say, push you to keep going. And you know what? Dane Bryan picked the right one. <laughs> uh, he picked the, oh yeah, he picked the right one. That is... Um, that's real love right there to push someone to make sure they're doing the right things and everything. And now since he's medically cleared, which was shocking again, I didn't think it was happening. I thought he was going to go away from WWE and he was probably go to new Japan. He was going to probably go to, um, ring of honor. I don't see him going to impact wrestling. Cause no, uh, no, no, I don't. Even, I think, even Daniel Bryan's, you know, even in this like deluded state, he probably wouldn't go anywhere near impact wrestling. He probably had, you know, if he had, you know, you know, because I think he's smarter than that. <laughs> I think he had a chance to go back like in 2010 or something, but he chose WWE. And you know what? For all the rights and wrongs, WWE, he, I think he made the right decision. <laughs> and then, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, a lot of people were happy. A lot of people were happy um, about this. And, and it was something... You could just hear in his voice that he just was so happy to get back in. And regardless of people, you know, uh, regardless of how you feel about him, regardless of you think he is this, that, and the other, he's the worst thing ever, he was this, that, and the other, you know, he you could just tell by his voice that he cares so much about what he does. You can tell by his voice that he cares so much, so much about the wrestling business, about how he, uh, how it is, how it, he loves it, he does. You can tell by his everything about him and everything around his, uh, the, you know, uh, you know the way his his um his body move, his um the way his inflection in his voice, all of it. Ladies and gentlemen, that man loves wrestling, regardless of sports entertainment, whatever it is, he loves the in ring competition. He probably he loves all that stuff. And and by the way, I don't think he probably hated being a general manager or, or, or a uh, cafe commissioner on screen. I bet that's back for him when he leaves, retires for real, when he wants to go on out on his own terms. I bet WE or any other promotion, you know, will put him in that position, and he will probably be happy to be in that position. Because I guarantee that that stuff really did probably help him find his real promos and real voice. I think that you know, because I think after maybe two, like maybe this run is good enough. Maybe five or six years, who knows? Maybe he will settle down back to that general manager position. I think that could happen. I think it could be a very interesting type of thing. Um, I think it would be something very good, something very positive, and I think something a lot of like like this could be something. Uh, you know, um, it could be something that a lot of people uh, will be like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing! This is something." You know, really, you know, something really positive. You know, something like that. I think that could be something good, something really great, and something that a lot of people um, to really um, uh, to get to. You know, I think that will be something really good for the people, really good for everyone else involved if they actually, you know, see him later on in his career if he wants to go on that route. But we're not going to continue to talk about We're going to be talking about, let's see what else to get into this moment, uh, this huge moment, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, Daniel Bryan coming back. You know, funny enough, it, I was going to talk about the, you know, Krypton, actually, the series from Krypton. I might do that in a video, believe it or not. I might do a video of that, you know, um, you know, if I have the time, I might do that. So, you know, I can't, you know, but I have other stories to get to, uh, uh, DC Comics, but I might just do a quick little five-minute recap if you want me to do that. Leave a um, comment down there below. Or let me know if you want me to see that. I might do it this weekend. I got no nothing else to do, other than some other homework stuff, which I'm almost done doing. I hopefully will get that done, um, like Friday or Saturday, whatever. 
but yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that would be something I you know look towards too. Um, anyway, back to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan coming back. What a moment! What a st- scene and everything. A lot, and after that promo, you could just tell he didn't know what he's going to do. He said, "Will I go back to WrestleMania? Will he be in time for it? Who knows?" But we probably by the end of the night we probably figure out it is. As he, uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens had a nice group promo, and I have to say this is probably the first time you actually felt the weight of the storyline between Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Daniel Bryan, and and Shane O'Mac. I thought that was you know because actually there's some passion there. There was actually something there, tangible there, because you can just see that yeah he was you know. Um, yeah, I was living vicariously through him. That actually helped out in the story when he was explaining himself. I think that helped, um, you know, the storyline. So, because let's be honest, Kevin Owens have been really disappointing since coming to SmackDown. And if I'm going to be honest, since his Universal Championship run, he has been really disappointing. Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> and I bet Kara, Kara, you know, Kara probably disagrees. He's in the chat right now. You know, um, um is that, you know, I didn't think his U.S. title match at WrestleMania was that good, but, you know, it was okay, but it just seemed like Kevin Owens never had that type of fire, but Sami Zayn, this new character, I loved, I think I really do like his character now, this annoying little pixie who just goes around, talks all this stuff, and just, you know, just annoying little, like, you know, uh, thing, pixie, whatever, like, he's like Navi from, um, Ocarina of Time, you know, that, that annoying type of guy, like, you know, just like, hey, hey, let's, it, I don't know what it is, but it just, he gets that annoying features up, he has that annoying stuff in, I like that, I do, I really do, and I feel like, honestly, you know, Kevin Owens is being a drag on him, and it sucks, but, uh, but the way they explained it, the promo there was really good, Kevin Owens, and he was like, you know, he and he said, yeah, you know, it's explained that, yeah, you two, we're going to be a part of WrestleMania. And honestly, you, you threw back in Shane's face. Even though Shane basically screwed him over, you know, multiple times. And then, you know, and then again, probably a worse face. Shane said, oh, we're going to have you both fight in a match, a meaningless match at WrestleMania. I know WrestleMania match between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn is okay, but can you at least give it a world title match? Like, say, if that world title shot, an opportunity for the winner. Make it a little more sizzle. You know, that's what I'm saying. Get a little more sizzle in that, you know, Shane. I guarantee you that Shane Ray wouldn't be going, ooh, 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 if he would have done that. But that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> um, If he did, if, and I say this, if, um, um, you know, it would have, if it is Shane O'Mac and Daniel Bryan, um, I think this would be, it would be a good way to rock him back. By the way, I love the old college, the college professor look that basically when Daniel Bryan went crazy. And, you know, I'm honestly surprised that's not a character yet in WWE. This, like, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in colleges right now, I would, think about it. A guy, you know, maybe not Max, but this guy who's like, he was raised in, like, this, you know, this, this millennial teacher saying, you know, I want to read the, but yet these kids are just annoying and crying, like, all this, all this type of stuff, the millennials are ruining everything, just type it up to, a, a, like, the 10th degree, he goes in and beats down people that they, like, he wants to, like, he's like, Matt Stryker, but cool, I don't know, find someone in NXT could do that, I don't, put, put that gimmick on Oni Larson, I don't know, but, that would be a badass gimmick, like, like just a pissed off, um, school college professor that's just so mad at the youth or something and he takes it out on these wrestlers and that's my crazy mind then and uh, you know what i went for but then again that's how i roll um but yeah uh, but after the tag match what do you do here what do you do with daniel bryan um uh, hopefully as um as supposedly, according to Meltzer, which I don't know, you take it with a grain of salt, it's like the difference between him and every other wrestler is that part of the agreement when getting WWE to send him to lead neurologists and Maroon's choosing to get evaluated is that he agreed after every match until WWE was comfortable that he was okay, he would go to WWE doctors backstage, get impact testing and neural 
physiological evaluation done, which is good. I hope that if that's the case, that he needs to really get himself back in. Because I heard a lot of backstage stories. You know, you saw that in Total Divas that he was, like, throwing up. He was looking saying he was dizzy, didn't know what was going on after some of these matches. Uh, I hope that he's, like, what, like I said, I want to show he's actually cleared. I hope he's safer. He doesn't do any more dives. He doesn't do any of that type of stuff. Because, uh, hey, he is a great mat work and tactician. And you don't need to do that. Personally, I think there's too many wrestlers who do too many dives more. I mean, everyone does dives. No one does dives. So, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, yeah, I think this could be something uh, really positive uh, for him. And hopefully he has a better run and a sustainable run on top. Personally, I don't know what you do with him. I mean, who's going to be the next general manager of SmackDown? Because SmackDown has no authority figures. Which probably say I have no problem with. Because authority figures are just should not be the main stars of the show. The main stars of the show should be the wrestlers. I mean, that should be the main that should be the main thing. Authority figures should have to be less hands on. Then again, that's part of the reason why I don't like didn't like SmackDown so much. Shane O'Mac was getting way too involved in these storylines. That's my personal thing. I could be wrong, but I just the authority figures are just way too goddamn much. So I think he just I don't. Hopefully they just find someone who just stays backstage. I don't know. Bring in a novice SmackDown general manager. Hell, I'll take Jeff Jarrett. No, no, not Jeff Jarrett, because he'll somehow find a way. He'll getting the WWE Championship or something. He'll find a way. How about this, ladies? How about this for a match? Jeff Jarrett versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title at, at, um, at the Royal Rumble next year. How's that? Book that, ladies and gentlemen. How's that? Jarrett wins in, like, in the most Russo swerve ever. Like every other Jeff Jarrett title win, he wins with like 15 people running in and just having him hit with the guitar and him becoming the WWE champion. You know. Oh, the heat will be glorious. And I just like that I lost every person who followed my channel. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know who's going to run SmackDown Live. Shane O'Mac will probably have to go right back. He's thinking intention to uh, leave. Is that going to be reversed when he comes back? Um, if that's the case, who's going to be hit the next general manager? Daniel Bryan's going to be coming back full time. Like I said, it's probably going to be maybe Jeff Jarrett, Jeremy Borash. I don't know who is going to be that, that next big figure who would take that next pick. I don't know, but it would be interesting to see who's going to be the authority figure, the next authority figure on SmackDown Live. So, uh, so let's see. Who should he do? Well, some say he should go back with The Miz, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really sick of The Miz because The Miz has just been chasing his tail for far too long. You know, uh... You know, um, he chased his tail for far too long. He has been chasing his tail, um, you know, just the same promos, the same. I, I like his stuff, but man, man, when he gets to the ring, I'm bored. I'm bored. I am like done with Dan with, with um with the Miz. The Miz is just so. I I'm just like man, the Miz. I'm just. He's he's okay if he was a manager. I will be. I will roll with him as a manager. But as a wrestler, I'm like, child, please. No, man. He's He, he got better, but, man, he's rough. <laughs> he's rough to watch. He's just, he tries. He really tries. He tries his best, and he fails. You know, I think um, Brian Alvarez said it best, and I think it was the Elimination Chamber. Like, it was like, uh, it was a year, or like two years ago when John Cena was champion. Yeah, that was. Yeah, he's like. Biz was has a great facial uh, facial expression, and then when he gets to the ring, it just goes all the crap. It just he just he's just like my gosh, man. Miz is he's just he is he tries, but it's just he's not even close to anyone's league at that point. He just he's just he's like you know uh, for you uh, football fans, he's basically. You know, um, you know, he's like a Case Keenum or, you know, no, Blake Bortles. Yes, he's Blake Bortles, you know. He's good enough to get you there, but, 
man, he you just don't like the way he plays. He you just will he will burn you more often than not. Uh, man, uh, but that's just it is, man. Oh gosh, it is so tiresome, man. It's so tiresome to watch the Miz do all this stuff, man. It is. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, Miz and Daniel Bryan, mm, I'm like, nah, man, I don't care. Um, I want to, um, um, I want to say maybe Nakamura when he comes, when he wants champion, that'd be actually interesting to see him and Rusev. I think that'd be fun. Uh, Rusev versus Daniel Bryan, I think that'd be cool. Um, Rusev and AJ Styles, not Rusev, AJ. um, Daniel Bryan versus uh, AJ Styles, that's good. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus, I think, Roman Reigns, I think those two, I, I would love to see those two guys hook it up again, because those two, those are my favorite matches, I love them. Um, let's see, uh, what else? Daniel Bryan versus, um, Seth Rollins, that'd be pretty good, a one-on-one match. Um, Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn. I'm cool with that. Let's see. You know what? Call me nuts, but I want to see Daniel Bryan and Apollo Crews. I think those two would actually be really good with each other. Unless someone can tell me they actually fought. I think it would be something really good and very positive. Something that would be really, really good. Something like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, um... Yeah, something would be really good. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you know, something like that. I think it would be something really positive to see. Um, see. Uh, just um, just want to just see something right quick. All right, uh, let's see. All right, uh, what else? What, what match should I can see? Um, it's Daniel Bryan versus, I mean, there are other people here you would love to see. I don't want to set this thing up. No. There it is. Let's put this. X. No, I don't want Mount Zelda Firefox, man. Oh, man. Get out of there. Ah, right, get out. There it is. All right. Um, that's what I would say. Daniel Bryan, in this situation, I think it would be really good. Uh, stupid pop-ups. Why did this happen to me? Why? I, I don't want any of this stupid stuff. I don't care about Microsoft Edge. Stop pushing this crap on me. Ugh, Windows Tech. It just... I put ad blocker for a reason. It doesn't work. Why does ad blocker never work for me, man? Ah. All right. All right, I need to get back to the point. All right, back to my main point. Daniel Bryan coming back is going to be interesting. I don't know. Are you going to put him in the main event for a couple while... I probably will worry about what this means for, um, ooh, Dan Bryan, Samoa Joe. That would be something cool. Um, what does that mean for to Roman Reigns? I think if they're both on separate shows, they're still going to do a brand extension, even though I don't think it's working. Um, I say fine. You know, they can have stars at both shows. Personally, you don't need an ace. I honestly think WWE is wrong in this, and I think a lot of people are wrong as well. You can have a rotating cast. A bench. And that's what WWE used to have. You had a bench of stars. Hey, Stone Cold's out. Right, you got The Rock. Boom, you got The Rock. got Triple H. Boom, you got, you got Triple H. Boom, you got The Undertaker. Boom, you got, you got Kane. Boom, you got all these other people. You had other people. A bench. That is what they used to have. How WCW had this. They had Sting. They had Lex Luger. They had Hulk Hogan. The NWO. They had Ric Flair. The Four Horsemen. They had all these other pieces in case, just in case things went wrong. Why is WWE just so standard of this whole one person here? It, you know, it's not working. I say just have Roman, if they're going to do it, end the brand split, just have a rotating cast of people who are all above and everything else. Sure, you have your number one guy, but at the end of the day, you do have a strong bench. A strong bench that just proves that you could actually do something. It would be actually really good for the WWE to have a strong bench. But that's just my personal opinion, man. That is something. Well, no, that, that I think I've already rated, ranted about that for too long about that. I rated, I ranted, I did all that stuff for too long. But anyway, 
we're going to take a small break here. We're going to take a little break, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are going to take one, and we will be um, talking about, well, oh, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, with one of the worst articles I've ever seen. I've ever seen. But you know what? Let's try, before we get into that, we're going to listen to some music. We're going to listen to some, let's see. Let's see. You know what? Screw it. Let's play some electric motive sky for Sonic and X from Speeding Towards Adventure. 25 years of Sonic the Hedgehog versus from OC Remix. And let me tell you, there's great albums there. Go download them. You'll not regret it. They're great. They're awesome. And um, you guys will really enjoy them. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back right after this. And this is uh, Duke CT. We're live here on TalkShoe.com. Here on the Duke CT Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> are back ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages it is me duke ct live on talkshoe.com and remember if you want to call into the insanity the, the greatness that is the duke ct lounge number the phone number as always is 724-444-7444 the call id connect to me duke ct is 92417 once again, the call ID is 92417 to get connected to the craziness. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm in a good mood. You can tell. Whew. So, yeah, after a big snowstorm, I love the snow and everything. And, you know, the world seemed to get, you know, everyone around here went back to normal and such. So, I'm in a good place, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah. Well, let's see. Um, let's talk a little about the big story here. No, not that. Oh, no, not that. Let me see. Where is it? Did I... Oh, goodness. Did I delete it? It's been deleted! Oh, hopefully not. Oh, here it is. There we are. Rolling Stone. Now... Uh, let's see. Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone. So much interesting, so much stuff that uh, <laughs> I could say. But, you know, I, I saw a lot of your articles. But my goodness, this one caught my eye. My eye, ladies and gentlemen. Like, like Terry Funk would say, my eye. They caught it right there. And, you know, right here in this article. And I'm going to put it out here, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the headline of it. I know it's clickbaity as hell, but dang it, it's just this article. Once you read it, it is truly that stupid. GDC panel. Video game descriptions 90 times more violent than actual war. Let me repeat that. Video game descriptions 90 times, 90 times more violent than actual war. And on a hot like this, I think in general, video games are much, much more violent than military operations or military simulations. Soak that in. Just sit there and I'm gonna let that marinate right now. I'm letting it marinate for you before I get in. Is it set down? Has it marinated? I want to make sure because this is just oh oh this is just so so priceless. So yeah. So let let's see. Um, right here it says um. 
A lot of top video says a lot of talk exactly make hundreds of millions of dollars dis decrypting real and fictional wars. Other games like Spec Ops a lot are praised with different takes on war. Uh, yeah, I you know, I played Spec Ops a lot. It was a really interesting thing, even though the third party mechanics really hurt it. And I like third party shooters, dang it. But yeah, it's very clunky and weird and such. But I know the game's not supposed to be fun. But whatever. Spec Ops a lot, but yeah. But it it says they said what, but is it enough? It says, uh, the artist says, but is it enough? More than that, could it be better? The easy answer is yes, they could be. The hard answer, one Aaron Bannon, director of design for Bohemia Interactive Simulations, tried to answer during his DDC panel, descript, descript, uh, <clears throat> depiction of war in games. Can you do better? Is how. And you know, funny enough, they have, uh, before this, this is actually interesting. This is a related story here. My link says, War games become vital history lesson as our greatest generation dies out. We want this thing here. It's, that's just beautiful here. It says, um, um, it says, in general, I say people have a deep appreciation for the military, but very shallow understanding of what the military does in war itself. He likes him writing a game about war, focusing solely on the combat, like writing a movie about relationships solely about how sex. The movie is a porno. It's pointless, he said. Games are much wider media and everything else. It, they they consider this thing of war is doing hero shit and everything. Um, not to say this, but there are other video games that do know about warfare and everything. Strategy games, um, you know, those type of games exist. First party is, are basically is, well... Well, Hero Fantasy, you're not going to really find a realistic version of a, you know, shooter because most often than not, you're all you're going to, because um, once you get shot in the war, you don't have Raspberry Jam come into your face and then just hide down basically until your whole uh, body heals up like your Wolverine or something. I doubt that actually happens in warfare, in wartime, you know? You know, that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, it says... Um, he says, in general, video games are much more violent than military operations or military situations. And I mean, orders of magnitudes are more violent. I'm like, yeah, I'm personally, if you, you know, I s probably once say I see where it's coming from saying that the violence and games are all over a top than something is in real life. Fine. But it's just that he wants to bring more of a realistic feel to it. You have some of that here and such. In games, if you are uh, looking to that, the realistic of war, war, but I mean, you know, this stuff right here. Um, yeah, this, this uh, this is like you know, he wants this whole less killing more war. Like I said, he can find this in um uh, strategy games and uh, talk about how military formations, um, you know, strategy, how get how the stuff works. And just stuff like that. And there it is. It's right there for this whole, um, you know, for right there saying the video games. By the way, it's fictional. One thing it has to be about violence is that it's fictional and over the top. You know, most people, when they see reality and stuff, they have a much more shock of the system, you know. Fantasy violence, how real it is, or in these video games, and there's been like stuff like that, you know. They say this, you know, uh, in all this other stuff is like, you know, it's, again, it's the synthesize all that stuff. Fine, but once the real stuff happens, people do, you know, they understand the, the difference between fiction and reality. And, and, you know, I think what he's, I know what he's trying to do. Maybe the headline basically just wanted to make an attention grabber. But you're saying that he wants more military shooters to be more realistic. Fine, but. Is that going to sell well? Is that going to actually do something about sell or anything else about that? I don't know. And most people, when they buy first-person shooters, the more people who buy first-person shooters are wanting to have that heroic fantasy. They want to play a game like, you know, they want to be, um, you know, the 80s hero and such. Now, is there over a glunt of those first-person shooters? Yes, I agree that to that. Seriously, I think there's um way too much first person shooters, you know, that just continue to talk about the one side of stuff. You know, I enjoy some, but man, it's very just 
it's a very just over abundance of it, especially Call of Duty, which just keeps making more and more of them to the point that there's nothing but, you know, they had to go back in time to World War II to make themselves more relevant. But then again, that's another time. But yeah, he wants, you know, um, the person here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Andrew Bannon wants more. Uh, once more shooters that go into this realistic version of that. Um, plan their attacks and stuff like that. Because again, you have that much in uh, strategy games and how to uh, you know you know play this type of stuff. But he wants more of a strategy game that has like first person strategy games where you have to sit and strategize and plan attack and plan costly and everything. Which I don't know if that's gonna work. Um, you know. I don't know if that would work. But right there, I just don't see how that is going to work, though, in a type of uh, selling thing. Because more often than not, people, when they have that type of stuff, will rush in. Because, you know, hey, at the end of the day, what's the punishment for the player? Because, again, there's no real punishment for the player. Like, oh, they get game over, but, you know, you're going to have the game, what, freeze and lock up? Or anything like that. Um, yeah. You know, that's what... And I really think they should, but... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I think the uh, what he's tried to, you know, to say is such is that there are games like that, but I don't think you're going to have more... To, you're not going to get the EA or... Activision or anyone else to actually say, okay, we're going to make Call of Duty more realistic and just say, okay, one shot kills you. That's not going to sell. That's not going to actually sell. And, you know, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just, you know, it's just, again, it's it just, um, you know, I hope that uh, though maybe he can articulate it well, but yeah, it's I just don't know. This 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 uh, this uh, Andrew um, Baron uh, wants to um, do this. Uh, you know, wants to have a more uh, you know like a nu nuance type of thing. Fine, but you you know realize that the big time companies are not going to say, oh by the way, we're going to have you do realistic shooters. Like here's the real stuff they have to do, the long boring stuff to do. You know, I mean. That's the reason why most like uh, people like Ellen Noir, they cut through all the stuff like that. Because if you really did police work, it would take like forever to do so. It's bogged down by busy work and busy work. So yeah, a lot of people, I mean, that's what it is. It's a lot of bogged down and busy work. And games and other media and like television, they skip that ahead and let the people do like, hey, instant justice, instant killing and everything else. I don't think people, you know, if they're more realistic, it's going to actually help here. But, yeah. And I don't think it's going to actually fly for the most part. But that's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. What a great show here. We had a nice here show here live on the Duke CT. As always, remember, you can always be here, call in live on the show. Always, so make sure that you guys will you know make in you know remember the phone number as always seven two four 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 seven four 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 which again number is seven two four 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 seven four 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 and the call ID to connect to me Duke C T is nine two four one seven which the number is nine two four one seven live every Thursday night here on talkshoe.com. We'll be right back next Thursday and also I will try to get my next review out soon and um all the other good stuff on YouTube and everything and so we can just keep this thing track moving as it should be anyway he's dct here peace love i'll see y'all when i see y'all later